Welcome back to the Wigwag engine build. In the last video I made the engine column, so today I'm going to build the engine cylinder block detailed on sheet 3 of the drawings. This is made from some 25mm square bar stock, which has been cut and machined to 60mm long. This now needs machining to 20mm along one side to get the correct width of the cylinder block, so that it can be turned and bored in the lathe. My usual die chem blue is applied to the block ready for marking out. Now in the last few videos I've been using my calipers for scribing layout lines, which I often use for that purpose, but today I'm going to use my surface table. Well, actually it's a granite kitchen chopping board that I've repurposed as a surface plate for marking out, and its accuracy is more than enough for my model engineering purposes. I have an old height marking gauge, but my eyes are just not as sharp as they used to be. So I have converted it with a digital scale, which is much easier to use. Now I don't have the dog leg scribe to zero the scale to the base, so I make do with using a one inch parallel block and zero out the digital scale on there as the reference surface. The accurate height is much easier to adjust compared to working with just the calipers, thanks to the fine adjust screw on the height gauge, and the large LCD display is a bit more friendlier to my eyes. This particular brand of height gauge also comes with the erase function, which is very handy when you make a mistake. This can now be mounted in the mill to remove the stock to size. Unfortunately, I stood in front of the camera for most of this operation, but I'm sure you know how this goes by now. My final size was around 0 0.04 millimetres, or about one and a half thou over size, which was close enough for me. This was deburred, ready for the next stage of mark out, which calls for a 10 mil centre line for the cylinder ball placement, and the 30 millimetre centre line was also marked up on the block. This was then centre dotted, ready for alignment in the lathe. Bubba. The four jaw, six inch independent chuck was fitted and the workpiece was set in the chuck allowing the 30mm centre line to protrude from the edge of the jaws. This was roughly aligned on the punch mark using the tailstock centre as a guide. My DTI was fitted to the tool post and my centering tool was used to clock the bore position to lathe centre, or as close as dammit. My drilling chuck was fitted and a centre drill inserted, and gloves removed, ready for machining. The block was centre drilled and then a 5mm drill was used to drill right through, 
were drawing the drill regularly to clean out the swarf. The drawing asks for a 15mm bore through the block, so the hole was opened up using progressively sized drills up to around 13mm. Then the boring bar was set in the tool post and adjusted so it would reach through the block. And then this was bored out to size. When close to size, several slow spring cuts were made to ensure a parallel bore. I overshot the dimension by a tiny fraction, but as we will turn the piston to suit the bore, this is of no real consequence. The outside of the cylinder can now be turned down to the halfway scribe line, so my stop was readjusted just shy of the scribe line. I used a high speed steel cutting tool to reduce the diameter of the block as this was an interrupted cut and carbide cutting tools are likely to chip on these type of cuts. Once the outside of the cylinder was turned down just below the 20mm outside diameter the internal radius was squared off using a carbide tool to get a neat transition into the corner. Finally, a file was used to remove the sharp angle off the end of the cylinder. Now the internal bore isn't as smooth as I would have liked it, as I had a bit of vibration on the boring bar. I should have swapped out to my larger boring bar for the finishing spring cuts, but forgot to do this as I was concentrating on shooting the video rather than on the part, so this may need a little bit of honing later to polish up the inner surface. The next operation is to drill the 2mm porthole and the 4mm tapped hole for the pivot rod, so this was blued and set to dry. The first dimension is 41.25mm from the base of the block for the pivot point and then a further 12mm for the porthole. And then a centre line was also scribed. A 2mm hole was drilled through into the cylinder for the porthole, and then I used a 3.3mm drill as the tapping drill for M4 and this was set to a depth so that it wouldn't break into the cylinder. And then this was drilled out.
This was then carefully tapped at M4, finishing to depth with a home ground plug tap. The threads aren't very deep, but the pivot pin will be set with Loctite when inserted, so as long as you have four or five turns of a thread, this should work just fine. The through hole is likely to throw up a burr, so this can be removed with a small half round file. The drawing calls for a 6mm radius on these two edges which can either be filed on or machined. Now, I don't own a radius cutter, but I do have some woodworking router bits, and this one is a close match to the six millimeter radius required. So this was set in a collet on the mill, and the edges of the block were gently taken away to a pleasing radius. So there we have it, the completed cylinder block. It just needs a good polish up with some Scotch-Brite to remove any machining marks. But as you can see, it's looking neat and not too dissimilar from my original wig bag, which was of course built without these plans. So join me in part four, where I'll be making, um, well, I'm not sure which part I'll be making in part four, but join me anyway. And as always, thanks for watching.